Well, the world's oldest, the largest hyperscaler in the world, Amazon Web Services, throwing the gauntlet to its competitors, the likes of Microsoft and Google, uh, through some big announcements that we saw today at their uh, day one of their flagship summit, reInvent 2025. Now, the markets, the industry was watching very carefully. What were we watching out for? Well, there are four things that caught our attention. Number one, the chips race. Uh, now, hyperscalers like AWS are not happy just being hyperscalers. They also want to enter the chips race. AWS entered this race back in 2018, and today they released the latest version, their most powerful powerful homegrown uh, chip called the Tranium 3, which they believe is exponentially more powerful than previous generations, and it couldn't have been more timely since Google has been flexing with what their uh, chips can do, which they've shown with Gemini 3. Uh, not just this, this is not the end of the road. Matt Carmen, their CEO, the AWS CEO, said that there's lots more work uh, under the wraps, uh, that as far as the next generation is concerned of chips, that will be Tranium 4, which will be exponentially more powerful uh, than this version. And this, importantly, is a statement of intent by AWS that they want to enter an ecosystem which is on lockdown by NVIDIA, courtesy its powerful GPUs. That was one. The second, as far as uh, the LLM race is concerned, this is clearly heating up. Uh, with Gemini uh, being released by Google, uh, we've seen the GPT versions uh, released by OpenAI today. AWS released its Nova 2 uh, generation of uh, LLMs, which they say is significantly more powerful, can achieve higher benchmarks uh, than even the likes of OpenAI as well as Google. And number three, data sovereignty impacts. A lot of countries are asking for their companies to store data locally, and AWS the solution is what they call AI factories, where they move entire server racks to the location of the customer companies to meet any data sovereignty uh, mandates. And finally, uh, as far as AI agents is concerned, AWS releasing what they call our frontier agents, which can compress timelines for tasks which ordinarily would have taken months, and that this is something which can be done by AI agents working round the clock for days and weeks on end. So that's a quick wrap of four attentions, four highlights that caught our attention. We are coming to you from Amazon Web Services flagship summit called reInvent 2025. I have with me Mr. Praveen Sridhar. He's the head of uh, the partner business at AWS India and South Asia. Mr. Sridhar, thank you so much uh, for joining us, being a part of this conversation. First, uh, AWS, the one message that uh, keeps traveling from the company to us is that uh, you're a customer-oriented company. Uh, when you talk about that, that puts you front and center for the India-South Asia geography. Uh, tell us what it is. Uh, in this current context of when we're talking about Gen AI, we're talking about Agentic AI, what those conversations are like when you have it with the partners, potential partners as well. Thank you, and uh, Ashmit, first and foremost, welcome to Vegas. Welcome to our flagship event, as you called it, uh, reInvent 2025. Yeah. Uh, we are very excited to be present over here with all the innovation and the announcements that are coming in. Uh, from my perspective, I work along with partners and customers in ensuring that they get the best of technology delivered sure. to them through the AWS services. Uh, we have been uh, servicing customers in India for over uh, uh, nine years since the launch of our Mumbai region in 2016. Okay. We even have the Hyderabad region which was launched recently. Overall, we have made investments in the tune of $12.7 billion going into 2030 mm -hmm. uh, for our customers to innovate and work upon. Uh, let's talk about one of the recent launches that we've mm -hmm. seen uh, with respect to AWS Marketplace. Uh, there you've provided solutions where vendors can provide solutions in the local currency, which is INR, uh, that uh, you, at the time of announcement, was said that this will allow for uh, one adjusting, not adjusting for forex uh, situations, it allows for tax savings as well. Just give us clarity, with this new solution being onboarded, uh, what is the rate of adoption like? The India AWS marketplace that we actually launched yes. in the first week of November has been a has been an ask from our customers and partners for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. At a global level, we have the AWS marketplace. Over 30,000 of our partners have their listings on the marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have over 70 categories of listings, uh, all the way from security to storage to networking to business application solutions that are provided. Now, customers and partners in India were asking for a uh, for that kind of an experience to be available in an India context. And what I mean by that is having the ability to uh, transact in local currency, which is INR. Now, mm -hmm. this is very, very important because a number of our customers and partners, especially in who service financial services or in SMB, uh, they, they do not want to actually, or sometimes they do not even have access to the USD dollar to do the transaction, so they wanted it in INR. 
and we are happy to have it launched in India. We are seeing tremendous amount of uptake. At the time of launch itself, we had 37 partners uh, signing up to be launch partners with us. This included uh, companies which are building software out of India like Freshworks, like Core.ai, uh, like Gupshop, and we had global companies such as Cisco, Salesforce, all of them coming over and launching their uh, solutions on the marketplace. Speaking of uh, fear of missing out, there are also questions being raised on the other side of the spectrum which, uh, which basically uh, ask, which pose the query that is there sufficient ROI as a part of these IT spends on Gen AI? Mm -hmm. uh, so the question that I want to ask you is that uh, are the investments that you're seeing, that your partners are putting in, is that substantiated by uh, an uptick in revenue or an uptick in savings on account of the IT spends that they're making as far as Gen AI is concerned? So um, AI is that kind of a technology which we see once in a generation or sure. once in a lifetime, right? I mean, we are obviously seeing, uh, like you actually mentioned, the, the palpable excitement of what AI can deliver in terms of business outcomes is there. We are actually seeing uh, uh, both uh, partners and customers innovate on this. We have our new solution, Kiro, which is our uh, IDE environment for building agents and building uh, co codes. And this is actually adopted by over 250,000 users in a record period of time. Sure. So these kind of technologies, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, what I call as organic adoption that we are beginning to see, uh, makes us be, uh, and we, we get to see that this is mainly happening because they are seeing business outcomes come out of it. Operating in a tough market like India, where there are options available, where you're competing with other hyperscalers as well, the question that I had in mind is that what does that do to your conversation when you're uh, looking at it in terms of margins, in terms of revenues, in terms of uh, pricing essentially that you have to offer to, to these customers? Um, you actually started the conversation by saying uh, AWS is customer uh, uh, oriented, uh, but we are actually customer obsessed. So everything that we do, we obsess over our customers. A lot of the feedback comes from our customers. Mm -hmm. And as long as we are hearing to that feedback and innovating, we have always found that customers adopt those solutions. Uh, so coming back to your point, in India, we heard that feedback. There are various regulatory moves made by various countries on data localization and data sovereignty. We've seen some recent moves here uh, in India as well, uh, where we recently had the new DPDP rules as well. Uh, what are your conversations like uh, with the partners? Is there uh, some sense of uncertainty or a sense of challenge that they fear on account of uh, data localization, data sovereignty demands by the governments? And if yes, what is the solution to that? Uh, we continue to work with, uh, not just in India, but across the world, AWS continues to work with governments, regulatory agencies. We believe clarity around these regulations and frameworks only help the uh, community out there adopt cloud and AI much uh, better. Uh, and from our perspective, we have always maintained the stance that any regulatory frameworks that come in, we are going to be uh, adhering to it and working with them. And I know I said final question, but I'll just, sure. uh, I can't help but ask you, we're towards the end of 2025. Uh, as we begin 2026, what's the top of the agenda for you uh, when you look at the India-South Asia market? Uh, get marketplace adopted. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like I actually said, marketplace was in the ask by our customers and partners for a long period of time. Uh, it took a certain degree of innovation on our side to make it, uh, to launch it in India. Uh, and like I said, just the fact that we had 37 partners at the launch of it, listing their solutions already, sure. gives me a tremendous amount of hope that the best of innovation that's happening is now going to be available for our Indian customers a lot faster. Well, we wish you the very best uh, for 2026, and thank you so much once again for hosting us here.